Hello, lovely people. We are here once again on the course Applied Electricity. The one I'm taking you guys to is Feminist Theorem. Now, I believe you guys, one way or the other, you've done something about Ketchup Law, that Ketchup's first law that deals with fine um, currents um, within a junction or at a junction. The current coming in is the same as the current going out, and also to how to deal with the loops that is combining the current and the resistance to their respective EMFs or the voltages. So I believe Ketchup's first and second law, they are well acquainted with it. Now, what is the difference that Pevenny theorem will give us? Now, Pevenny gave a theorem, and this is how the Pevenny theorem goes. So, any linear circuit connected between two terminals can be replaced by a Thevenin's voltage in series with a Thevenin's resistance. So, in Thevenin, we need a Thevenin's voltage and a Thevenin's resistance. Okay, so now, with Thevenin's theorem, we realize that there are two main things we are seeing in Thevenin's theorem. One, the first thing we are seeing is the Thevenin's voltage. And the second thing we are seeing is Thevenin's resistance. And we know that the Thevenin's voltage is represented by VTH and the Thevenin's resistance is represented this way. So these are the two things we are seeing in Thevenin's law. Okay, so step one. Remove the resistor from the circuit and mark the two terminals as shown in the diagram. And step two, find the opposite circuit voltage, which is VTH, across the terminals by applying the um, Kirchhoff's voltage loop, voltage law. Step three, record the circuit created in step one and deactivate all sources. You short circuit voltage sources and open circuit current sources. And then step four, find the total resistance of the circuit resulting from step three as seen from the two terminals. Step five, you produce the Thevenin's equivalent circuit and connect the resistor whose current is to be found. And step six, you calculate the current in the circuit in step five, and this current is being sought. So now, when we come to this question, to analyze critically this question very well, um, we, I took you guys to um, the slide that is the steps for Thevenin's theorem or how we can go about them in history. These are the two main things. But with this particular question, how do you go about it? I'm going to solve this question and do, I'll do I'll try as much as possible to also solve another question before this video goes to an end. So now, the whole idea about Thevenin is that, you see, when we're dealing with ketchup, ketchup, you have to apply a whole number of loops and simultaneously calculate the current within each loop. Or the current that passes through each resistor in the loop, in the loop or in the electric circuit diagram. But then you can go straight forward to the particular resistor and calculate the current within that resistor. So that is what Kevin is giving us. So now what happens is that when you are able to calculate your Kevin voltage and you are able to also calculate your Kevin resistor, now you can find the current within that particular loop within that particular resistor and that current will obviously be the voltage according to Ohm's law which is IR is equal to V so therefore R is equal to V on R so now it will be the voltage that is the Thevenin voltage divided by the Thevenin resistor or resistance plus the resistance in that particular resistor so now that particular resistor we want to find the current in the R here the current that passes through. So the Thevenin resistance we find plus that particular resistor within is what we are looking for. Okay. So now back to this question. With this question, we want to find the current that will pass through this three ohms resistor. We want to find the current that will pass through only this three ohms resistor. So we don't need to go back to the catch up and do find the loops here, B, C, D, clockwise, and this one of this. No, no, no. We are going to go forward to find the current within the three ohms resistor. So finding the current, finding the current in the three ohm resistor. And Thevenin will help us. So now, considering the step one and step two of the principles I gave you, this is what you can see from this very diagram. We have to redraw the diagram. And the steps make sure understand that 
we should put two points at the ends of the terminal of this very resistor. So this resistor wants to find the resistance within. You should put two ends terminal there. So now we draw our first diagram. This 42 volts. This 12 ohms. Point B. So now when we move to and this six ohms. Now, when we get to the three points, that is the three ohm resistor. Then what we can do here is that we put terminals, an open circuit terminal, over there. So now, A B. Now, after putting this terminal over there, here is also thirty-five volt. Okay. Sorry. Okay, so A, B, C, D, E, and F. Okay. Now, after putting this terminal there, we introduce our turbine voltage. So, let's introduce our turbine voltage in this direction. Turbine voltage in this direction. Now, after introducing our turbine voltage, our interest here is now to find the value for the turbine voltage within this open circuit. We want to find the value for the turbine voltage here within this open circuit. Now, to find the value for the turbine voltage here, what do we do? We can consider this loop or mesh, and we consider this loop to find the final voltage here. Because we have a voltage here, we have a voltage here, and we have another voltage here. But this is the turbine voltage. So to find this turbine voltage, we can consider this loop and consider this loop. So now, we now like to apply the catch off voltage loop. Now, upon applying the catch off voltage loop, let's first take our first loop. Now, with this one, we don't need to pass the parameter is clockwise or clockwise. How we write the points within this loop would determine whether it's clockwise or anti clockwise. So, for example, I want to take this very loop and I'm taking the loop C, B, uh, here is E. C, B, E, D, and back to C. So this is a loop. Now this loop I took, no one should tell you that this loop is anti-clockwise. It's anti-clockwise because I took it from this direction. So it's an anti-clockwise direction. So now when I took, this loop I took simple means that the current is flowing, the current will be produced here. But when this very current gets here, it will not be able to pass. It's what you should take note. Now, the only current that will pass through this 6 ohm resistor is the current that is being produced from this part. So, let's say the current that is being produced from this part is I1, and the current that is being produced from this part is I2. The only current that is able to pass through this 6 ohm resistor is also I1, because when it gets here, it passes here. This I1, same I1 gets to this 6 ohm resistor. Why? Because this part is open circuit there. Open circuit simply means there's an infinite resistance. Infinite resistance, so it will resist every current that passes through. So all the current have to come back and pass through the six ohms. So this is the diagram. So upon knowing this diagram and taking this loop, what do we do then is that now there's a voltage here which is 35, and this voltage is moving in this direction because the current is moving in this direction. This is the positive. So now there's another voltage here which is plus the turbine voltage. Now the voltage are done. You are applying catch off law. So they all the sum of all the EMS should equal to what? The sum of all the uh, potential differentials. That is the, the current times the particular resistor it is going through. So now, what in this loop, when we take this loop, we only see one resistor here. And what current is passing through the resistor? That is what? I1. So now we calculate that current, which is 6, which is equal to 6 times what? The I1. And this is our first equation because we have another voltage here. So now to take this one, to, let's take it clockwise because the current will move from this part going. So taking loop A, B, E, F, and back to A. Now when you take this particular loop, I want to calculate. We can also get um, the voltage, which is 42. It's only one voltage, it passes through 12, and the same current also passes through 6, the 6 ohm resistor. So that means if the same current is passing through, we can just keep calling it that it's equal to 12 plus 6 times I1. 
1 plus 6 times I1. Now, from here, we can calculate which is the equation 2. We can calculate for I1. So now I1 was equal to what? 42, which is equal to 18 what? I1. So I1 is equal to what? 42 on 18 ampere, which is equal to negative. Um, so the current we calculate here will give us 42 over 18 ampere. So we can use the calculator to break it down. Now, when we put that 42 over 18 ampere here into equation 1, we can find the 17 voltage. So now the 17 voltage becomes 35 plus the 17 voltage, which is equal to 6 divided by 42 on 18. Now, this you can do your own calculation in those here 36318. So now you can do your own calculation in the house. So we get the terminal voltage to be simply equal to that is um, 42 on 3 minus 35. So now the terminal voltage finally will give us minus 21 volt. So when you do a calculation, we are having the terminal voltage as minus 21 volt. Okay. Now, the next thing we do here, or we can do to this one, is that we have to find the terminal resistance. We have to calculate also the terminal resistance. How do we go about calculating the terminal resistance? Okay. So now, upon calculating the terminal resistance, um, we need to also short circuit all voltages, all voltage sources within the electrical circuit diagram. Okay, so let me clear this. Okay, so we had, let me put there. Terminal voltage, we had minus 21 volt. So now I want to calculate for the RTH, which is the terminal resistance. How do you go about that? Now, the same place, you put the RTH at the same place. But before we can put the RTH, you have to short circuit all voltage sources. You have to short circuit all voltage sources. So now, we redraw this and we short circuit it. And I think you know, you know the meaning of short circuit because we treated it in previous videos. So it's fixed ohms. We come here. So at this point, what we do is that you put the RTH that's the terminal resistance, and we short take it to the 35 ohm, the 35 volt. Okay. So now, when you short circuit this, we are left to find the terminal resistance. How do you go about finding the terminal resistance? Now, to find the terminal resistance, we realize that this 12 ohms is parallel to these 6 ohms. So we want to just find the resistance, the value of the resistance, that is the effective resistance. So the terminal resistance here will simply be called the effective resistance of the resistance left in the circuit diagram. Now, the effective resistance of the resistance that is left within the circuit diagram. That's also, we realize that we have two ohm resistor and six ohm resistor. But the two ohm resistor and the six ohm resistor are parallel to each other. We've done resistors in parallel, so you can go check on it. They are parallel to each other because they will experience the same voltage across them. So they are parallel to each other, but on different they differ from different currents because this is not an open circuit that is closed. So if the current was supposed to even pass through, different currents will pass through them. So when the current gets here, some will direct here, some will direct here. So it is parallel to each other. The 12 ohm resistor is parallel to the 6 ohm resistor. If it's parallel to the 6 ohm resistor, then what is the effective resistor? So therefore, 1 over the RTH will simply be equal to 1 over 12 plus 1 over 6. So that is the formula for finding effective resistance where the resistors are in parallel. So when you do this, the RPH in this year will be 4 ohms. So when you calculate this, you'll be getting 4 because this one will give you 
12 times x divided by 12 plus x. And you get 12, 4 ohms at your RTH. Now, after getting your RTH, the last diagram you draw is to find the current actually through this 3 ohm resistor. So now what happens is that you now introduce the 3 ohm resistor. So you introduce your terminal voltage. You introduce your terminal resistance. And now you introduce the resistor, which is the 3 ohms, in which you are finding the current. So now the current that will pass through this, let's call it I, is the current that will pass through this 3 ohm yeah. resistor. And now this current can simply be found. So how do you find this current? So this I simply now becomes the VTH all divided by RTH plus this 3 ohm resistor because it is in series. Now the 3 ohm this because the same current will pass through them, they are in series. So when that happens, we have minus 21 volt from what we got. The output we have 4 plus 3 volt. So now when you do this, you are getting minus 21, sorry, minus 21 divided by 7. And that will give you minus 3 ampere. So this is the final. So the current that will pass through the three ohm resistor x minus three ampere, and this is terminal steel.